We see this almost every day. Some new form of solicitation that preys on people. Slick new ways of convincing us to turn over our precious personal information or to send in cash or checks for services, products, or the promise of winning a prize. Most of us can discern the difference in these requests, right? But that is not often the case for people living with a form of dementia. And the financial toll that results can simply be devastating. You know, research shows us two competing stories. One, that as a result of aging, people are more vulnerable to issues like financial exploitation, being scammed, and so forth. And yet on the other side, the research shows that older people uh, do just as well with their banking, with their bills, with their credits, as do younger people, sometimes even better. Once those cognitive and the psychological vulnerabilities start to occur, that really enhances the vulnerability of older adults. There's a saying by the Federal Trade Commission, everybody is vulnerable to scams. Everybody's vulnerable to financial exploitation. But once you put these into the mix, psychological vulnerability and cognitive decline or dementia, the vulnerability increases several fold. Hey Beth, what you working you on again? there, huh? What you working on? Right here, got all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah. Last will and testament, that's good stuff to be looking at. Yes. As a uh, power of attorney, you know, Dad entrusted me to help him, you know, navigate these times. I mean, he d he doesn't understand that you know we're trying to help him, and you know that and it's really difficult. To me, the the shock was seeing the the overall amount of you know mail that he was receiving, and then you know the the day that we discovered all those checks that he had written out to these, these sweepstake companies. And then when we confronted Dad about that, and, you know, as to why he would write all these checks out, and he at the time thought it was his investments. Yeah, so you, you, you will understand that these, these aren't real, right? That they were just, they were after your, they, were, they never give any money out. They, they were just after you to write checks. And then, you know, somehow they get, uh, hooked up with those scammers that made, were making phone calls to you. Could be. Yeah. Here it says you have already won a prize. Did you ever win anything? No. <laughs> I mean, that was, I guess, a real defining moment, you know, through his, his uh, memory loss and dementia. That's where it really kind of the, the ball, light bulb went off for us kids, is that, you know, here was this, this man who was so protective and so smart and intelligent about all the, the investments he had made, and now, you know, he's responding to, you know, simple sweepstakes as if it were, you know, some of his own investments. The real trouble he got in was, was in the phone calls, you know, where they were trying to get him <clears throat> to send them money, and it was always some sort of sweepstake related. As a, a journalist and an editor, I mean, we see these, this weekly. You know, you know, our our staff goes out and they they go through uh, police reports on a weekly basis, and it is it's a it's a huge problem in our society. And they they go after the elderly, but there's not only the elderly that are vulnerable. I got a point where I can't handle any more money in the family. My wife has to, my wife has to take care of it. Yeah, she's uh, the best lady in the world. Mm -hmm. Of course I love my family, every single person. And I can see where they're trying to help me. And they'll say, you shouldn't do that. You don't need that. What about driving? I don't have a driving problem yet, but I, could, I can vision that it's coming. Actually, you just recently signed over your your driver's license, do you remember that? You wouldn't have a driver's license anymore? You and Karen went to the Secretary of State. No, I think I still have a driving license. We love you. We love you, Dad.
Baby boomers never expected that financial exploitation would become such a huge issue in their lives. This now affects families, it affects professionals, it really affects all of us, and it's going to require coordination and care in the financial areas to help guide older people safely through life. Our whole life is a series of moments. You and I can connect those dots, but the dementias go in and they erase those connections. So even though they can look at the obituary and see that their mother has passed away, one second later they'll turn around and ask if anybody's seen their mother. So we have to move into that reality with them and experience it with them and realize that that's the truth for them. You were doing pretty good on your own for a long time, weren't you? Yeah. Living on your own? Living on my own and doing everything myself and with all the help of uh, the other, all the children. All the children. And the town, the little town of Romeo. You walked around, you kind of knew the police there. Yeah. So if you got a little confused, they'd help you find your way home? Right. They were good about that, weren't they? Yeah. And uh, it just slowly kind of crept up on you, the confusion and forgetfulness, didn't it? Yeah. When I was three years old, my grandmother worked in a nursing home. And back then, the folks with dementia were tied down to wheelchairs, not given much to do for the day because they weren't able to plan and they weren't able to remember. And so because that part of the vitality of their life was taken from them, there was no effort given to entertaining them or making them feel important. The industry today feels that just because you can't plan or can't remember, there's still a vibrant part of our life where we can live in the moment. That's the reason that we get married. That's the reason that we have children. That's the reason we have plans and take vacations. How are we gonna do this now that we know we have issues? Well, I can stay in my home, and for some people that's a good option. 96% of Americans want to stay in their home as long as they can as they age. And so oftentimes people start with, what can I do, what services can I put in place to stay at home? One out of two people now over the age of 85 have been diagnosed with some type of dementia. And what we find is when someone is first diagnosed with dementia, the family's wheels start turning on, what am I going to do? How am I going to care for my loved one? What will our options be? Home care is one of the great options people select originally when they first are looking at what to do with mom or dad who's been diagnosed. If they're living on their own early in the disease, they're not a risk on being on their own. They're not wandering. They haven't had falls yet, but they just need a little guidance and companionship because they are on their own. She looks like you, that's your grandbaby. Yeah. Did, you help, did you help make some of these? I heard you can knit, you used to knit a lot. You can see it. Yeah. And just being in the home and having somebody to take people where they like to go and want to go isn't enough anymore. So what's next? Well, now we have day centers. Day centers with really good programming. Day centers that can be used as resources. Day centers that give me a place to go and have value to be so that you get a break, I get a break, we all get a break, and I get to be someplace different. The suggestion was made to then move my mom, Rhea Brody, to this an other incredible operation run by the Jewish senior living here in Detroit called the uh, Brown Adult Day Program. We provide a place for people that are living with dementia to spend their day socializing, being active, engaged, and really enjoying each day as much as they can. They have a myriad of activities. In Boca Raton, we have a specialized center, the Anne and Louise 
Memory and Wellness Center at Florida Atlantic University. We provide a wide range of services in the Adult Day Center. Some of the most popular ones are the creative arts and the painting program. We provide the participant a big net so they can jump fly and they don't feel they're going to fall. And from the outside, you don't real, realize what they need. And that's why all the paintings are so different. And we work color. And I always say, we got the best medicine, and it comes in a bottle, and it's plastic bottle, it's paint. Also, we have the exercise for them to not fall and to keep their stability and flexibility. Um, Lectures are very important. A lot of our people like thought-provoking discussions on current events, for instance, or travel, or, or politics. The outside garden area is very well received by people at certain times of the year. When it's not too hot, they enjoy vegetable gardening, butterfly gardening, and just having conversation out in the outdoors and enjoying nature. More individuals cannot live in their homes Families cannot take care of their individual needs, so there needs to be a forum where they can come and reside within a community. The options for senior living today are incredible. Beautiful places from independent living, assisted living, memory care, to a longer term facility. It's no longer just about a nursing home. In a very specialized area, Memory Care offers the individualized attention for those that are suffering from cognitive disabilities. We have a couple, the Cassis, that are living together. They've been married for 62 years, and Don, the husband, is very involved day to day with Janice's care. He is extremely devoted and gives such loving attention to her needs on a daily basis. We do allow couples to live together even though it is very difficult for the spouse to be able to see a loved one slowly disappear into the disease of dementia, he is still there, he is still involved. Janice, mm -hmm. we love each other, don't we? Yes. He can still have the touch, the loving care that is needed for Janice and himself. If we're successful during the course of the day, we've given them a series of moments to enjoy. No, I'm not, I wouldn't be afraid to get dementia based on the care that, you know, people are getting nowadays. I've seen some beautiful things.